Jackie Robinson might have filled the bleachers, but can his story fill the movie theaters? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of 42. Jackie Robinson, a black man in white baseball. I want you to know I'm there for you. Yeah, my heart. Think about the abuse that he's going to take. Your enemy will be out in force, but you cannot meet him on his own low ground. What you gonna do if one of these pictures throws through your head? As Babe Ruth, Joe Montana, Michael Jordan, and Tiger Woods have all proven, a great player can shine a mighty spotlight on a sport. And another such player was Jackie Robinson, who not only captured the public's attention for breaking records, but also for breaking the color barrier, which paved the way for the diversity we see not just on baseball fields today, but many fields and courts and courses. And even beyond the game itself, Robinson was the first black player to continue his career off the field as a sports commentator on television. Yes, there's no denying that Jackie Robinson is an historic figure of great importance on many different levels. And odds are solid that screenwriter and sometimes director Brian Helgeland, who's previously written the films L.A. Confidential and Mystic River and directed Payback and Night's Tale on the Order, will do a competent job telling his story. And word is that television actor Chadwick Boseman, even if he isn't a marquee name, does a great job playing him. Now the real question is whether or not today's audience, living in a world where segregation and discrimination are also mostly a part of history, will have any interest in seeing this movie. The Express, which told the story of the first black football player to win the Heisman Trophy, box office flop. Ali, the story of one of the most prominent black boxers, hell any boxer of all time, Muhammad Ali, box office flop. And forget race, even films about the history of sports like Leatherheads and Cinderella Man were also box office flops. Then there's Harrison Ford, who's having little luck at the box office these days himself, particularly when he's not starring in a big action movie. But the last obstacle is perhaps the most ironic and unfortunate. Despite Jackie Robinson's legacy, there are few black players in baseball today, as pointed out in a recent article in Time magazine. In fact, it's at one of its lowest points. Just 8% of last season's opening day rosters were black. And as the article also pointed out, that's led to fewer black baseball fans. So, who's going to see 42? Maybe we all should, to remember that back in 1947, Jackie Robinson had to fight to be the only black player. So as you might have seen recently, 42 was nominated for a Golden Trailer Award, because it has a very cool trailer. It has a lot of cool, quick cuts to it. It has a Jay-Z song. Very well done. I think it totally deserves that nomination. However, the film isn't anything like that trailer, which isn't a bad thing. Just don't expect that kind of outside-the-box thinking, because Brian Helgeland here has made a very old-fashioned biography, and he's done a very good job at it. Uh, this is like those the, the very good quality studio biographies that used to come out like in the 40s and the 50s. And it has those kind of visual qualities, at least uh, with the cinematography. Very rich, very beautiful. It's a very pretty movie. Um, that said, though, when I did review the trailer, I said that despite the way the trailer was cut, I worried somewhat that this would be a little bit like a television movie. And I have to say that Brian Helgeland's uh, choice of shots, I think, don't really rise above a television movie. But what pushes 42 into feature film territory is his script, Brian Helgeland's script. He's a very talented script, uh, screenwriter, but also the performances. Uh, I had said that I thought Harrison Ford looked crazy in the trailer, and he, he does go a little over the top, but he, got, he does so with such heart, and he has such great one-liners that it was so, it, I really enjoyed his performance, actually. I ended up really enjoying it. And also because it was the... I don't think I've seen Harrison Ford this engaged in a movie and, a, and uh, in a performance in, like, in years. So it was just nice to see him kind of wake up and go back to movie making. And it makes me a little excited about for this new chapter in his career in Ender's Game. Uh, if, if maybe he might finally get back on track because he's been so wildly off track for so long. Uh, and also uh, Chadwick Boseman, also a television actor, also had me somewhat concerned, but I think he did a really wonderful job uh, with his role, a very difficult role. I think he played the nuances perfectly. Uh, and also, as you'll see at the end credits, they show pictures of Jackie Robinson. He actually looks quite a bit like Jackie Robinson. But this all leads me to an interesting an interesting uh, thing to think about in film right now. Uh, you might recall the recent article with Will Smith where he said he didn't take the role of Django in Django Unchained because it wasn't the lead. And he felt that Christoph Waltz's character was very clearly the lead, and Christoph Waltz is the one who walked away with all the awards. Uh, I would say that one could argue that in 42, even though it's the Jackie Robinson story, that to some degree Harrison Ford walks off with the movie the way Christoph Waltz did with Django Unchained. Now, I don't know if that's because those are the, they have the... Um, 
Ford and Waltz have the flashier roles, and uh, Fox and Bozeman are kind of saddled playing these very stoic uh, men who, who aren't very, don't project their emotions outward very much. Uh, you know, sometimes playing the hero is a thankless uh, role. But uh, both, as you know, Fox was very good. I think Bozeman's very good. So I'm just, I'm, and I don't want to take away from Ford and Waltz's performances, were, which were also very good. So here's hoping that in the future, Hollywood figures out how to balance this out a little better so that people don't feel this way. But uh, I have to say, I think that 42, while, you know, it's not, you're not going to have those great cinematic shots that you're going to find like in uh, clip reels <laughs> when you know you know what I'm talking about like when they have those wonderful shots from like The Godfather or Hitchcock films or Spielberg films where it is uh, visually breathtaking but th this is just a really good movie and I think in terms of baseball films it's up there with Field of Dreams and A League of Their Own and I really think it's worth seeing in theaters on the biggest screen you can find and uh, you know what, and the last thing I'll say is it's a great movie for people who have, who are dreamers, but not, but who are dreamers and doers, who, who want to achieve the, uh, the seeming, seemingly impossible. And it's very inspirational to everybody, I think. I think 42, really good film. It knocked, the cliche, it knocks it out of the park. So I recommend it. If you've seen 42, be sure to share your thoughts down below. And as always, thank you for coming to be on the trailer for uh, reviews like this, uh, movie news, trailers, trailer reviews, and I hope you'll consider uh, subscribing. Thanks for watching. Bye.